Greetings to all my YouTube viewers. I sincerely thank each and every one of you for giving your valuable comments, remarks, feedback, likes and shares for all my videos, which is giving me immense pleasure to do more. Today's topic is going to be quantum computers. Many students nowadays they think that quantum mechanics is only there textually. It is only found in the textbook and it is nowhere applied. It's not so. Quantum computers uses the principles behind the quantum mechanics only. So many of the quantum mechanics uh, uh, definitions and basics are already explained in my previous videos. So today's uh, this uh, uh, basics of quantum computers will be explained in the nutshell involving the five factors. First thing is I will explain about the difference between a quantum computer and a classical computer. Secondly, the difference between qubit and bit. Thirdly, my talk is going to concentrate on the history behind the quantum computers. And lastly, some terms like quantum confinement, quantum... Uh, lastly, some of the technical terms like quantum chaos, quantum entanglement, quantum superposition and what is quantum confinement will be explained. Now, yeah, the, coming to the first topic, what is the difference between a computer and a quantum computer? So, nowadays we are using the classical and digital computers in many of the workplaces for ticket booking, for daily uses, even in supermarkets, everywhere we are seeing the, uh, uh, the everywhere we are seeing the computers being uh, playing a very indigenous role. It has become a very important part of our life. So, in all the calculators which we were using for the calculations in the uh, old days are now completely replaced by computers. Even a vegetable seller a in a market or a fruit seller, he started using a computer to store the data. So, in banks, in offices, in government, you know, retail shops, everywhere we are seeing these computers. So, the computer started actually from classical computer, digital computer, then we had a supercomputer and now the deepest and important research is on these quantum computers. Quantum computers are also a very supreme supercomputer, I would rather say. Uh, the, even in Europe supercomputer, they are saying that the first European superconductor is now connected to a quantum computer. So, all the supercomputers are replaced by quantum computers. So, what is this quantum computer? A classical computer is which, which we are seeing every day, how it is performing different calculations and what is the storage uh, data and all. These quantum computers is rather it can perform multiple complex calculations, many algorithms and complex you know matrices could be solved in a very small amount of time at a very faster pace of time. Like exponentially rapid speed, they are these quantum computers are performing such a such a complicated calculations in a very fast, fast pace of time. These, this is nothing but a quantum computer. These quantum computers are being like, you know, surprisingly that the research behind these quantum computers are non-ceasingly improving in every day. So, when you read on quantum computer and its mechanism, how it is operated in, in, the, in any of the web sources, you will find a surprise results that the development is very, very rapid on these quantum computers. Practically, researchers, physicists started using these quantum computers for performing the physical simulations. Okay. Secondly, what is a bit and a qubit? Bits, we all know, it is a it is a smallest unit in computer, which is like bits are always like you know it is like a unit which is represented by zeros and ones. So all the messages fed to the computer are in the form of zeros and ones. That is bit. Then what is a qubit? Qubit is a quasi state of zeros and ones. Means it is it can be zero, it is also one. It can exist in both the forms simultaneously. So in my previous video, like Schrodinger's cat experiment, I had explained on this qubit also. In quantum mechanics only, we will say two states can be uh, existing simultaneously. It, it cannot be like only one state, only zero or only one. It can be both at the same time. So, that was explained in my previous video, Schrodinger's cat. So, that is a qubit. So, qubit only is used in a quantum computer. Now, thirdly, the history behind quantum computers. History behind quantum computers is so interesting that we start saying from the World War II that 
people started understanding the significance of a computer because during the war time all the messages were to be sent only very confidentially and the secrecy to be maintained for all this our soldiers were using encrypted messages and we required a device which could decrypt the message and it can be sent to the soldiers and in the army so if you see quantum computers played a very major role we could see that this computers are going to be playing a significant role in the uh, war time cryptography and quantum mechanics was essential for the nuclear physics used in the manhattan project manhattan project is led it was actually led by us assisted with uk and canada it is a project where nuclear bombs were tested and they were using the quantum computers for the nuclear physics used in the bombs so as physicists applied quantum mechanical models to computational problems what happened was the digital bits are replaced by qubits and quantum mechanics computer science they were going hand in hand they started beginning its converge they started converging so in 1980 paul benef he introduced the quantum turing machine which was using quantum theory to explain a very simplified computer so when digital computers became faster physics started facing a very a uh, rapid increase in performing the calculations so we wanted computers having many uh, very high speed it should be operated with the high rate of accuracy and for all that quantum computers were the best choice so in uh, eight, 1984 paper charles bennett and gilles brasset they applied quantum theory to a very to a to many cryptographic protocols and demonstrated that quantum key distribution could enhance the information security uh, richard feynman was actually rightly saying that the wave particle duality again in my previous videos i had explained about light having a particle nature and a wave nature richard feynman suggested that all the matter the matter like sound waves electrons protons they all have a wave particle duality this principle was used in the qubits so he was suggesting that a hardware should be uh, completely designed for making your quantum phenomena to be more influential in the computer simulation then you had many quantum algorithms and lastly my talk i said i will introduce you three to few terms namely quantum confinement quantum confinement means the electrons are seen as different energy levels means when the energy levels of an electron are going to be bigger or the band gap between the conduction band and valence band are going to be bigger there is a reduction in size from here only nanotechnology emerged in and when there is going to be a very big gap between the conduction band and valence band due to the different energy levels of an electron there were something called some optical properties of Uh, metals could actually be uh, what to say witnessed so these optical properties like color centers and traps are resultant from this shrinking or from this reduction of size of nuclei because of the wide separation of energy levels of electron this is already explained in my previous video bioluminescence video which you can go and refer also and lastly the quantum entanglement means a particle in two different universe could be connected to each other though the dif- distance between them is so high still we could connect both and this is called quantum entanglement so with these information i would like to sign off thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you all